All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the City of Los Altos' COVID-19 business update on January 25th, 2021. Uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Anthony Carnaseca. I'm the Economic Development Coordinator with the City of Los Altos. Listed there is my phone number and my email address. Uh, if you ever need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. As you can see at the bottom of the page, there's two big resources from the city that I suggest you reach out to, uh, which is the city's resource page for all of COVID. So that will provide information about vaccines, uh, everything up to date for COVID for the community. And then the second one is our business resources and guidance page. Um, I've been doing my best to try to make sure that's up to date. And as of today, it is up to date with all the information from this PowerPoint. But if you need anything, all of the links, everything from this PowerPoint presentation will more than likely be on that page. Um, this is my quick little disclosure. Um, I'm not the seer of all seen things, knower of all known things. I really encourage you, if you're going to apply for any grants or loans that are listed in this presentation, please consult with a tax or legal professional to make sure it's the right decision for your business. Um, I am doing my best to just present all of the resources that are out there, and I would suggest that you take the additional step of making sure that uh, everything that you do is in the best interest of your business. So the shelter in place orders. Um, this is a brief timeline. I kind of speed through a couple of things, but in March of last year, the county issued a shelter in place order uh, shortly after the city declared state of emergency. Um, in August of last year, the state unveiled the blueprint for a safer economy, which created the tier systems. And then in December, the state issued the regional stay at home order, closing most of the Bay Area businesses. Um, and that lumped us with uh, Alameda County, uh, we're San Mateo County, Marin County, San Francisco County, and some of our neighboring counties, all as one region. Yesterday, the state did lift the regional state home order and Santa Clara County returned to the purple tier of the state blueprint for a safer economy. I'm going to touch on in a second what exactly that means. First of all, I do want to clarify that we are still in a shelter in place where you must stay home and you can only leave your home for essential activities to work for an essential business to perform minimum basic operations or for essential travel. Um, individuals must wear masks when completing essential business and are, are encouraged them to wear them whenever they leave the house. It is really imperative that people still maintain at least six feet of separation from others and that individuals must wear masks while shopping or working in the essential business. So an explanation of the orders. Um, businesses are restricted from both county and state orders. Uh, when there are two different restrictions, the more strict one is the one that we abide by. As of right now, the county and the state are aligned with the county being in the purple tier on the state's blueprint for a safer economy. So as of right now, we only need to abide by what the state rules are, but there are some unique county um, guidelines for business sectors. So the state of California. Uh, the state unveiled the blueprint for a safer economy, which was a framework of four tiers that basically range uh, right here from purple is the most severe, widespread, red is substantial, orange is moderate, and yellow is minimal. At this point in time, we are in the purple, um, but it is important to note how you move through the tiers because that is an important step that will be hopefully coming into play as numbers in case it'll go down. Um, to move forward to a less restrictive tier, counties must meet the criteria for the next tier for 14 consecutive days. Um, at a minimum, the county must remain in that tier for at least 21 days. So we are at least 21 days from moving from the purple to the red. Um, but at this point, we are in the most restrictive tier from the state. So at this point, I do not believe there is a further step if, we, um, can, if our numbers continue to decline. So where is Santa Clara County now? As you can see here, this was a snapshot from uh, January 25th. It shows that we have about 67 new COVID cases per day per 100,000 residents, which puts us well over that seven new daily cases per 100,000 to get into the purple tier. And then our positivity rate is more than 8% at 8.5%. So our positivity rate, if it continues to decline, may end up in the red, but we really need to get the amount of new cases, which is at 33 adjusted, down to below seven in order to move into this red tier. At this point in time, we're going to stay in the purple probably for a period of time here until we can get those numbers down and then hopefully transition into the red. 
So this is a cheat sheet for the blueprint for a safer economy. Um, it's really important to understand that this cheat sheet is available from the state and it just shows the impact of the different tiers on each sector. I'm going to go through it a little quickly, but the big thing is that um, critical infrastructure is open. Outdoor gatherings are allowed with a maximum of three households, but it is very important to understand that the county does have guidelines where you must stay a certain amount of feet from one another, you must wear masks, and you must make sure that you're not interacting inside. It is all outdoor gatherings at this time um, and make sure you abide by all the rules from the county. Um, outdoor playgrounds are open and outdoor recreational facilities such as county parks, city parks, uh, state parks. Um, hair salons and barber shops are allowed to be open indoors with modifications and I'm going to touch on what that will look like. Uh, retail is open indoors um, but there is a capacity limitation as well as shopping centers. Personal care services are allowed indoors. Museums, zoos, and aquariums are allowed outdoors only. So for uh, our museum in downtown, you would be able to open outdoors. For places of worship, you're allowed to be open outdoors as well as movie theaters. Hotels are open with serious modifications and they must close all gym and recreational facilities that are within their hotel. Gyms and fitness centers are allowed outdoor only. You are not allowed to operate indoors at this time. Um, as you can see though, um, there is a big jump from purple to red where when you enter red, there are some indoor uh, allowable sectors. But at this point in time, we are in the purple, so outdoor only. Restaurants are allowed outdoor, uh, to be open outdoors only. Um, they are allowed to have tables that are able to serve people, but they must abide by the specific outdoor dining guidelines, which I'm going to touch on in a second. Wineries are open outdoor only. Bars, breweries, and distilleries, the big key is where no meal is provided. So if you are not providing a meal and you are a bar or a brewery or distillery, you must remain closed. Um, if you on, want clarification on whether you are a restaurant or a bar or brewery, please connect with the county for further clarification because they're the ones truly defining what exactly is a restaurant. Um, family entertainment centers are open outdoors. And then card rooms, offices must be remote. So if you are working in an office, you must remain remote unless you need to go into the office for a specific purpose, whether that's to get mail, do something really quickly, but for the most part, you need to work remotely. Uh, which is why I'm obviously not in my office. I'm in my house where people vote. Uh, professional sports are allowed without live audiences um, and they must abide by certain guidelines. Um, and then amusement parks and live audience sports are all both closed. So um, the County of Santa Clara. So the latest County of Santa Clara order, um, this is really just built on to the blueprint. So the blueprint really states what's allowed and then the county just wants to enhance that and really make clear what they would like businesses to do. So all businesses that are open currently must uh, require that employees and customers wear face coverings, maintain at least six feet. I want to be clear, it's at least six feet. So please try and make sure you can keep people distance more than that when possible and provide hand washing and sanitizing supplies to customers and staff. I want to applaud all of our businesses that have been doing a great job of trying to keep people as safe as possible through this time and really make sure that you do have hand sanitizer right at the front door. Even if you're an outdoor dining establishment, please make sure that you make it easy for people to quickly sanitize their hands when they're at your establishment or for retail right at the door as people are walking in. Um, all businesses must make sure that they have uh, submitted a social distancing protocol that is dated October 11th, 2020 or later. I'll show you in a second what that actual sheet looks like and what your business should have in the window. Um, the one big thing is to require workers to do their jobs from home whenever possible. Obviously for some of our businesses, that's not possible for um, restaurants where they're gonna be working in the kitchen or serving people outside or if they're retail actually working with customers to help them purchase something from a safe distance. Um, but please try and help your workers stay as safe as possible and work from home when possible. Um, you must report within four hours to the Department of Public Health from the county if you learn that any of your workers are confirmed positive. If you do have a confirmed positive test and reach out to them, they will provide you with the next steps and instructions on what to do. Um, there is a mandatory directive on capacity limitations for all businesses. 
that just presents the calculations for how you figure out how many people are allowed within your store. So please go to that website from the county for more information. This was the sheet for the social distancing protocol that I was referencing. All businesses should have this red check mark. There was a green check mark that was over the summer allowed with the COVID-19 prepared, but at this point in time, the red check mark is the only approved check mark. And then you can see this uh, social distancing protocol visitor information sheet that you should have in your window. You should also try and post uh, similar posters to this one that was developed by the county, encouraging people to stay distant and cover their face and how to properly wear a mask. Um, really the biggest thing is the county wants to make sure that you display that your staff and you are educated on what to do for social distancing. And then secondly, they wanna make sure that you have something to educate the public about how to be safe through this pandemic. All right, so the specific industry directives are here. These are the big ones that really relate to our businesses at this point. Um, the personal care services, outdoor dining and gatherings. And these are live links. On the county's website, there is more information about uh, what exactly you would need to do for different types of business, but I'm gonna touch on them just a little bit. For personal services. So all personal service businesses must provide service by appointment only and refuse walk-in clients. Please make sure that you only um, allow people who have set an appointment and know that they're gonna be coming. And then do this verbal screening with them uh, where you ask if they've tested positive, come in contact with anyone who's tested positive, feel any type of symptoms, and make sure that you create and retain an employment log for a minimum of 60 days. It's really important. I know that this was done before uh, the shutdown at the beginning of November or December, but please make sure that you do have an appointment log, clear and dated starting today, just so you know who was in your store and what they were doing. Um, you must close waiting areas, uh, remove amenities. At this point in time, the county has shut down all break rooms. So even break rooms, people can't sit in there and eat. Um, you can use it, use it to make food, do different things like that, but um, really they don't want people congregating in one location to um, socialize indoors. Um, make sure that your workstations are at least six feet apart from one another and make sure that your workers have surgical masks uh, that fully cover nose and mouth. At this point in time, I do believe they are encouraging N95 for um, a lot of our workers. Eye protection, uh, smocks and gloves to switch between clients. And once again, everybody should be required to wear face coverings at all times. For sanitization measures, please make sure that workers and clients wash hands before and after service. Um, people are not allowed to touch their cell phones in between service, so if someone's sitting there and they're having their hair done, they can't be texting on their phone. Um, and make sure that you're disinfecting high touch surfaces in the seats. So if someone is sitting and you switch between clients, please make sure you sanitize between those two. Um, other requirements, really install physical barriers where possible, especially for nail service. So between you and your clientele, I know that most of our businesses already have many of these measures in place, which is awesome. And please continue to do so. Um, when someone is going to pay, especially at the uh, checkout area, it's really important that you install a physical barrier as well as keeping your masks on to keep both you and the customer as safe as possible. Um, tenants of salons must sign a statement indicating they accept responsibility to abide by rules and provide it to the salon owner. So if you are a salon owner, you will ultimately be responsible for making sure you have all of those for your tenants within the salon. All right, outdoor dining. Um, so outdoor dining is allowed to resume. Uh, you can only serve food and beverages in outdoor areas. Um, required face coverings for all employees at all times and customers need to wear face coverings unless they are currently eating or drinking. And I know this is an extremely tough thing to do, but really emphasize that customers, when they're not sipping on their drink or they're not eating, they need to be wearing a mask, even if they're just sitting at the table. Um, alcohol may only be sold in the same transaction as a meal. So as we touched on earlier with bars, um, restaurants need to serve food with any alcoholic beverage. They cannot just serve a bar and allow people to have a beer. They will need to have food as well. You're not allowed to have any live entertainment and tables should be at least 10 feet from the nearest table. So I know that um, over the summer when we were working with restaurants, we did make sure that those were all 10 feet apart. 
please make sure that they are at least 10 feet apart to allow six feet of separation for people at all times. And there's no self-service of any kind. So the enforcement of the order, this is really important. And I wanna emphasize this is that at a period of time, the county did start to give warnings and then they uh, gave a citation if the business did not comply with the um, infraction that they had. At this point in time, the county is saying there is no more grace period. It's been like this for a couple months now, but it's really important for a lot of the businesses that are reopening. If you are found to be in violation, you will be cited on the spot. Um, they are really trying to emphasize and make sure that businesses abide by the order and really um, don't violate it. So at this point in time, you will be cited if you are found to be in violation of the order. If you have questions about it, please look at the county's website for a list of information to make sure that your business is in compliance. And I'm always happy to assist as well. So the eviction moratorium, this is really important for our uh, commercial tenants. Um, this has been extended through March 31st, 2021. The big thing I wanna emphasize here is that you cannot be evicted for inability to pay rent due to substantial income loss for businesses from COVID, but this does not mean that you will not have to pay back rent. And it's very important that we say this because I wanna emphasize that our uh, businesses should connect with their landlords to start discussing what type of a payment plan you could work out if you have not been able to make your monthly rent payments. Um, you will be given 120 days after the moratorium ends to pay back all rent with no fees. But if you do not pay that within that 120 days, I don't know what exactly may happen, but please make sure that you have a plan in place with your landlord. I'm sure most of you are already working on that, but continue to develop and build those relationships with them. Um, and I would suggest that you reach out to them and figure out the best way for you both to work forward in your relationship, whether that's adding months onto the end of your lease or different ways that you can work with them. Um, I'm happy to present some ideas, but ultimately I want to suggest that uh, you reach out to a lawyer if you are having issues with your uh, landlord. The city's response. So the city has been doing our best to connect with the Chamber, Lava, La Pod, and the Town Crier on a regular basis to make sure that everybody's up to date on what's happening as the county releases orders or the state surprises us on a Monday morning. We're trying to make sure that everybody knows as quickly as possible what that means for our businesses. Uh, we do work individually with business owners and employees. I am a division of one, but I'm more than happy to help any businesses that need to reach out to me. Uh, we do update our website on a uh, weekly basis. Uh, as things happen, we really try to make sure everything's up to date. Um, and then I have been doing webinars uh, this is a webinar, a link to the Silicon Valley Small Business Development Center that I did with them, uh, which was very well attended. Um, if there is a topic that uh, restaurants, retail, personal service would like me to do for a webinar, I'm more than happy to schedule one. At this point in time, I think it's a little bit easier for me to do these recordings and send it directly to all of you so you can watch it when you're available. Uh, the Los Altos Small Business Relief Fund uh, was a fund that granted money to small businesses. Uh, what's open Los Altos, I'll touch on in a second, but Open Streets Los Altos to help our restaurants and our retail downtown. Banners around town, uh, Trim a Tree Los Altos and its inaugural event this past December was very successful. And then currently the Los Altos Restaurant Takeout Week where we're trying to encourage people to shop takeout for restaurants. Obviously the state uh, threw us a curveball in the middle of the restaurant takeout week and said that outdoor dining is allowed, but we want to encourage uh, all of our community to support our restaurants through this time where um, it's kind of a limbo between outdoor dining and the weather's um, potentially going to be a little bit difficult with us. What's open losaltos.org was a collaborative effort of the chamber, La Pod, Lava, and the city. Uh, provides information on how to support small businesses. So if you don't see your business on there and you'd like to, please contact me directly and I'm more than happy to make sure that we get you on there. Uh, there are a number of financial resources. Um, the idle loans, the economic disaster injury loans have been closed due to limited funding, but the Paycheck Protection Program, uh, which is run by the Small Business Administration, did reopen. So qualifying businesses are encouraged to apply for the second round of funding through pro approved local lenders. So you can go to the Paycheck Protection Program website and they list out the local lenders that have been approved to uh, establish these loans that become grants if they're used to, for payroll, mortgage, rent, utilities. Uh, it's really a great program and I encourage you to look into it. 
Um, the Small Business COVID-19 Relief Grant Program. Uh, the second application period will open Tuesday, February 2nd through Monday, February 8th. If you did apply for the first round of funding and you were approved, great, you got your money. If you applied for the first round and you were deferred on the wait list, you will be automatically considered for the second round, so you don't need to do that. Um, if you didn't know about the program for the first window and you'd like to apply, I suggest you go to the state's website and apply in that window from February 2nd through February 8th. I do know that last time their website did encounter some difficulties, so I would suggest to try to apply at a low traffic time, which would probably be early in the morning or late at night. So go ahead and try and find a window when it's not busy and you can get the website up and running. Um, the iBank loan program is intended for businesses design denied by the SBA loans. So if you were not able to receive money from an EIDL loan or a PPP loan, then the state has offered the iBank loan program. Um, if you do have questions, NorCal Financial Development Corporation is the one in charge of distributing these loans for our region, and their phone number is right here. They want to do everything over the phone, really get to know the business and make sure that they can help them through the process. All right, and then on a local level, there are loans for small businesses within Santa Clara County through the Small Business Relief Fund. Um, they are available on the Silicon Valley Community Foundation's website, so please check that out. But those are loans, once again, not grants. The one thing I want to reemphasize, I've said this a lot and I'd like to make it clear, be aware of loan scams. I know that it's an unfortunate reality, but people are looking to take advantage of businesses and business owners during this time. But please be aware that people may try to be scamming you, so be hesitant, ask questions. Um, if you receive an email and it looks a little fishy, please look into it and don't provide any personal information unless you've verified that that person is with um, the staff or the institution that you're applying for loans or grants with. Some other resources. Uh, the county's public health order is always available online. Please take a look at it. I know that I went through a lot of it in this presentation, but please take a look. Um, the social distancing protocol form link is here. Um, guidance for businesses and workplaces. The COVID-19 data dashboard is a great resource, so please go to the county's website. They do a great job of updating ICU occu occupancy just to get an idea of how many hospital beds are available and our case counts. Uh, very important. And the Silicon Valley Small Business Development Center is a great resource. I want to give a shout out to all the work that they've been doing to help small businesses through this time. Please reach out to them if you have any questions. They're the local arm of the Small Business Administration at the federal level. So they're really localized, but they will have the resources of the federal government. And then I want to end with, here is my name, obviously Anthony Karnaseka, and my phone number and email. Please do not hesitate to reach out if you have any questions. Um, I am always happy to help, and I really sincerely hope that if you need anything, you can reach out to me, and I will be available to help. Um, I really hope that we can get through this final push, and that this really is the, hopefully, some light at the end of the tunnel with all of these changes that are happening, and hopefully we can get out of this purple tier and into the red, orange, yellow. Really quickly before we end, I just want to make sure that this is something you all see. Um, this is what the tiers look like. Once again, I want to make sure you see this. We are in the purple tier and we are in the widespread uh, level, but hopefully we can start moving to the red, orange, yellow as the numbers decrease. But right now, as you can see, we are not close on our daily case count. Um, if you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call back. I want to end with my number and email. Thank you so much. Have a great day and stay safe out there. And please make sure to have all of your customers and your staff wear masks. And then please let me know if you need anything. Thank you so much.